Welcome to another message from God's Word. We're studying the book of Acts, and we're studying from Greek, but we're studying the Bible. That's the most important thing. The Bible is, uh, is our instruction manual. You buy different things, and men usually when they buy something, they don't ever read the instructions, how to put it together, how to make it work. And uh, sometimes it falls apart, sometimes they tear it all the way up. Uh, before they ever get it together. And finally, when it doesn't work, they decide to read the instructions. Maybe all the parts aren't even there. So one of the things you need to do is when you get an item of some sort, you need to uh, take it all and lay it all out if you're going to put something together and make sure all the parts are there. Now, all the parts are here in this book. Everything that you need in Christian life and everything that you might need in science and medicine and history is all here and it's all correct. In the 25th chapter, we're going to try to cover this chapter this evening. There's only a few verses left in it. But we're going to go back and read the first part of it. We're starting with verse 1. Now, Paul basically is in prison, so to speak. He's under house arrest. He has done nothing amiss or wrong. The, uh, the Jewish entity here, religious society, want his life. They want him dead. Not because he's done anything wrong, but because they don't want to hear about Jesus. They have called a tremendous amount of uh, torture upon themselves. When they said, let his blood be upon us and our children, it has, has been that way. Now, the Jews are God's people. That's God's nation. We always look at our, ourselves as uh, America. We live in America. And we look at it as, as if it's God's, in God we trust, uh, uh, one nation under God and all of that. And it should be that way. All nations should be founded upon human gods, the prescription for human government. But the nation of Israel was called out, period, by God, and that nation was established by Him for His name's sake. Now, these Jews had gone bad. The Jewish people had gone bad. Uh, God will bring them back again. He'll gather back again at the end of this age and, and he's going to use them for 1,000 years in, in, his, in the uh, millennial reign on this earth. But God is in the process of bringing them back to him now. Many things have happened to Jews in, in history. Their mouths are calling for blows right now. God is going to turn Rome loose on him. He turned Nebuchadnezzar loose on him one time. They have been captured, hauled off, and brought back. That city of Jerusalem, I believe, has been destroyed 17 times and leveled. And Jerusalem means a city of peace, except it has not been a city of peace. Now we go back the Jews have tried to follow Paul around wherever he, he goes and try to kill him. He has been killed one time by them. He was stoned to death. He's been beaten. He's been tortured. Unjustly. The injustice shown to Paul by the Jewish people, and he loved them. We all loved the nation of Israel because it's God's nation. I don't agree with everything Israel does in, in history, but I'll tell you one thing, I'm not going to fight them. They're God's nation, they're God's people. Now, they're in training session, they're in uh, kindergarten, and they're a rebellious little bunch of brats. And they're wanting the blood of Paul. Now when Festus had entered into his own province after three days, he went up into Caesarea to Jerusalem. 
And there the chief priests and the principal men of the Jews and the charges before him against Paul, and they kept on begging and urging him, and asking as a favor that he would have him brought to Jerusalem. And meanwhile, they were planning an ambush to murder him on the way. And Festus answered, now remember, these are religious people. And the law of Moses, they looked upon Moses as God, but Moses said, Thou shalt not keep on murdering, thou shalt not keep on lying, thou shalt not keep on bearing false witness, and yet they were doing it. Festus answered that Paul was in custody of Caesarea, and that he himself planned to leave there pretty soon. So he said, let those who are in a position of authority and are influential among you go down with me, and if there's anything amiss or wrong or any criminal behavior about this man, let them so charge him. So when Festus had remained among them not more than eight or ten days, he went down to Caesarea and took his seat the next day on the judgment bench and ordered Paul to be brought before him. And when he arrived, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood all around him, bringing many grave accusations against him, which they were not able to prove. Lying, perjury. Now, if you committed murder, if you committed perjury, if you lied, according to the law of Moses, you were to die. They were committing capital offenses against this innocent man. Paul declared in his own defense, neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar have I offended in any way. But Festus, wishing to uh, ingratiate himself with the Jews, answered Paul, Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem? and there be put on trial before the Jewish Sanhedrin in my presence and concerning these charges. Now, Festus knows what's going to happen. But he puts the ball in Paul's park now. But Paul replied, I am standing before Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be tried. To the Jews, I have done no wrong, as you know, better than your question implies. If I then am a wrongdoer and a criminal and have committed anything for which I should deserve to die, I do not beg off and seek to escape death. But if there is no ground for these accusations against me, no one can give me up and make a present of me to them, I appeal to Caesar because he was a Roman citizen, remember. He had that right. And they had to protect him. They protected him all the way down. They sent hundreds of soldiers to protect him from the Jews already. And now he's down here. He's under house arrest, and he's still under the protection of the Roman government because he's a Roman citizen. He has power. Then Festus, when he had uh, consulted with the men who formed his council, answered you have appealed to Caesar, to Caesar you shall go. Now after an interval of some days, Agrippa the king and Bernice arrived in Caesarea to pay their respects to Festus and to welcome him and wish him well. Now, here we have Agrippa. These are all grandchildren. Agrippa and Bernice both are brother and sister from the same mother and the same father. They're full brother and full sister, and they're living together as husband and wife. And people all over the whole nation know this. Now they're going to have a big party. They've got a big festival going here, and they're going to have a good time. But now they've got a, uh, a jester, a court jester, so to speak. Remember what a court jester was, the joker? They were the ones that uh, entertained the... Uh, the uh, upper echelon. Well, now they got entertainment, and that entertainment is Paul. And while they remained there for many days, Festus acquainted the king with Paul's case. 
telling him there is a man left a prisoner in chains by Felix. And when I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me about him, uh, petitioning for a judicial hearing and condemnation of him. They wanted him to condemn to death. They wanted a death sentence upon this man. And I replied to them that it was not the custom of the Romans to give up, a, up freely a man for punishment before the accused had met the accusers, accusers face to face and had an opportunity to defend himself concerning the charge brought against him. Now we're not talking about just any citizen. This is a Roman citizen. This isn't just some slave or whatever. This is an important man. And when they came here together, I did not delay. But on the very next day, I took my place on the judgment seat and ordered that the man be brought before me. But when the accusers stood up, they brought forward no accusation in his case of any misconduct as I was expecting. He, he knew that they didn't have any grounds. Now, these men, and even this woman, are going to come to the conclusion that Paul has been done wrong. And that he should be set free. But they don't set him free. Instead, they have some points of controversy with him about their own religion and superstition concerning one Jesus who had died, but whom Paul kept on as asserting over and over continuously that he is alive. And I'm being puzzled to know how to make in inquiries into such questions, ask whether he would be willing to go up to Jerusalem and there be tried regarding them. But when Paul had appealed to have his case retained for examination and a decision by the emperor, by the Kyrios, by the Lord, by the Rex. I ordered that he be detained until I could send him to Caesar, Rome. Then Agrippa said to Felix, Festus, I am also desiring to hear the man myself tomorrow. Festus replied, and you shall hear him. And you shall hear him. Now let's go back and let's look at some facts concerning this case from the, uh, from the original language. Verse number 23. Te un e para rion, el fontes tu agrippa, Kai tes bernicas, meta poles, fantasias, kai es el fonton, es to a teronion, sin te kiliarches, kai, that's a long verse, andrasin tois cot, exocane tes polios, kai calusiontos, tu, Face to ek de ho polos. Now they've had a lot of pomp and circumstance. They're showing off their uh, uh, royalty. He said, There in the more, when, when the next day having come, Agrippa and Bernice, Agrippa and Bernice, his sister and his wife. With much display. Now this word fantasia, this means, we get our word fantastic from this. Fantasia is from this word. With much display and pomp and circumstance and display in the lights. There's a lot of uh, candles, lights, and uh, all kinds of festivities going on here. That word there, fantastic, fantasia. And having entered into the uh, acroaterio, the place of audience. This word here is uh, uh, a very unusual word. It's all along with the word fantasios. They are very rare words in the Greek language and not used in other places in the New Testament. And then it says with both 
the Kiliarchs, the chief captains, and captains over 1,000 men, and there are 5,000 men here. Legionary tribunes. And men, uh, the ones according to uh, leaders, generals of the city, the mayors, uh, the upper echelon of the city, and having commanded Festus, he was brought, Paul, Paul was brought, or caused to be brought before them. Kai Faison, whole face toes. Agrippa, Basileo, Kai Pontus, Hoy, Sim Porontes, Himen Andres, Theorete, Tuto Peri Un, Upon To Plathos Ton Judeo. This word here comes from Fiamme. And he says, Festus and Agrippa, King, of all the ones being present together with us, behold this one concerning all of this multitude of the Jews have come together. And Tuxio, Kai man and Te Yerusalemos, Kai and Thade. Bontes me de ain auto sein mechete. This this man, this little man, whom all this commotion is about. He said, "You behold this word here. We got a word theater from that word there, theorete. This one concerning all the multitude of the Jews, they have petitioned." To me in Jerusalem. And here in Thade, uh, they're crying. To be, uh, this word Dane here, it means to, uh, to be proper, inevitable. It says they don't want him to live any longer. They want him murdered. It says they want his life shortened. They want his life extinguished. Let's go back here and look at it. A, a couple of words here. The 24th and 20th. Well, let's go to the 23rd. The next day, Agrippa and Bernice are having approached with great display. They went into the audience hall. That audience hall is like a great uh, coliseum, accompanied by military command commandants and the prominent citizens of the city, at the order of Festus and Paul was brought in. Then Festus said, King Agrippa and all the men presented with us, you see this man about whom the whole Jewish nation came to me and complained both in Jerusalem and here, insisting and shouting that he ought not to live any longer. They want him dead. Verse number 24, Then Festus said, And I found nothing. In verse number 25, And I found nothing that he had, had done deserving death. Still, as he himself appealed to emperor, I determined to send him to Rome. He should have been set free. But I have to, he should have been set free and under protection. Verse number 25, Ego Dei, Tata La Boeing, Maidane, Oxion, Alto, Thonatu, Tet, Proxene, Alto, De, Tuton, Epi, Calisomeno, Ton, Sebastion, Ecrina, Pampane. But I 
have discovered for myself nothing worthy of death that he has done. But this one, having appealed to Sebastian, Sebastian, you ever, you ever heard of the name Sebastian? You know anybody with that's named Sebastian? Sebastian. Sebastian is a name for it's another name for Augustus. My uncle that raised my great grandmother, his name was William uh, or uh, Augustus Corley. My grandmother named one of her children William Augustus Corley. Willie after her brother, and Augustus after her uncle. Augustus means a uh, Lord. Master, King, Potentate. And I have judged and decided to send him there. Verse number 26 now. Harry, who, as falles, t gropsa, to kirio, uk, echo, dio, pro egagon, Auton F. Himon Kai Malisa. Epi C. Basileo Agrippa. Hutos Tes Anacrisios. Genomenes Sco T. Grapso. But of whom, or concerning of whom, anything to write to the Lord. Now he calls Caesar Lord. This is another word for Sebastian. This is another word for Augustus. You know, it was Caesar, Augustus, Caesar. That was a term. Augustus means the head, the top, the best. And here we have the word Lord. The word Lord in the Old Testament, in the Septuagint, the word Jehovah is translated into the Lord. And Jesus is called the Lord Jesus. He said, but not I have wherefore to, to break forth him before you, and most of all before you, King Agrippa. So as the examination, the examination has taken place, having become that I may have what I shall write. I, I, I'm wondering what I shall write to Caesar, to the Lord. Verse number 26. However, I have nothing in particular and definite to write to my Lord, Caesar, concerning him, so I have brought him before you all. And especially before you, King Agrippa, because see, he's supposed to be the, the king of the Jewish people. He's picking the high priest mm -hmm. and all of that. He's, he's the head. And after further examination has been made, I may have something to put in writing. What are we going to do? How are we going to deal with these people? The real criminals were the ones shouting for the death of Paul. Paul was not the criminal. The Jewish people were the criminals. Alagon, Gar, Moe, Dokio, or Dokie, that is, Pemp, Ponta, Desmion, Me, Kai, Tos, Ka, Auton, Aitios, Se, Mene. Now this word here, oligon, means uh, unreasonable. <clears throat> For it seems uh, illogical, idiotic, unreasonable to me. That word here, logos, means uh, to reason and to put down some facts. But this is, uh, it means unreasonable, idiotic. For idiotic to me it seems. The sending of prisoner. And also, the charges against him. Charges to prove, or to, the word here, semine, that means to, uh, I have to be able to prove to Caesar why this man's even under arrest. I have no reason to arrest this man. Let's read this last verse here. For it seems to me senseless and absurd 
idiotic to send a printer prisoner and not to state the accusations against him. That's the last of that chapter now. We go into chapter number 26. But what's happened to Paul, Festus, all of these people, and one of the things Paul is going to defend himself in, in the chapter 26, but there's nothing in the world that Paul's done. All the charges against Paul are false, just like they were against Jesus. Remember when they kept bringing false charges to Jesus and witnesses that didn't agree on anything? Mm -hmm. But they demanded that Pontius Pilate kill him. And Pontius Pilate says, I am innocent of this man's blood. And they said, let his blood be upon us and our children. And here we have the same people mm -hmm. doing this again. The same people. God's people have had to put up with a lot down through the ages. Sure I have a church history chart up here. Do you realize that between 50 and 100 million Christians were killed by the Catholic Church? In what we call the Dark Ages. The Catholic Church brought on the Dark Ages. Islam now, that started by their prophet, so-called, Muhammad, killed between, well, killed 270 million people, and many of those Christians. Here we have 50 to 100 million, we have 270 million. How much is that? 370 million people that have been murdered and tried unjustly just because they were Christians. The last several years, if you go on to like YouTube or whatever, you can go and watch Christians being beheaded in Islamic nations. You can watch babies burned alive. And I'm going to tell you something if the Catholicism had the tentacles today and the power, they would be doing the same thing. I can show you real people in church history that were murdered and tortured by the Catholic Church. And if you go to the Inquisition, a lot of people try to make excuses for the Catholic Church going into the Holy Land and killing and, and raping and pillaging. against the Islam, the Islamic world. Islam and Catholicism are both criminal societies. Islam and Catholicism are both criminal societies. They killed people, they fought across the Mediterranean Sea, both going back and forth. A lot of people said, what if it was for the uh, uh, Crusades, uh, we'd all be speaking Arabic. If it wasn't for Catholicism, Muhammad wouldn't even raised up. He wouldn't even known how to start a religion. Catholicism already had power. Catholicism was already conquering by the sword. His religion didn't make sense, so he started conquering by the sword. Since it worked for it, for Catholicism, it worked for Islam, and is still working. The children of God in Asia Minor. Let's go to the seven churches of Asia for just a moment. This is, they are here in Paul's time. They're here. Paul founded some of those churches, the seven churches of Asia. There were more than seven churches. There were lots of churches. But let's go back and just see what happened to those churches. Paul the Apostle started a group. They called themselves Paulicians because they all have all the letters and writings of Paul, plus they had the, uh, the Gospels. And those people, when Islam got into power, they killed and run them out of the country. Catholicism was on their heels and Islam was on their heels. They went back into what we call the Valleys of the Piedmont. In the 1600s, the Catholic Church found about, found about 
found out about them there. In Samuel Moreland's book, the Ecclesiastical History of the Churches of the Valleys of the Piedmont, it names the people that lived there. They had lived there for hundreds of years, minding their own business. The descendants of some of those people are the Amish and the Mennonites today, and Baptists. And Marilyn pointed at herself. She, her DNA goes right back to the valleys of the people. They went in there and killed and tortured those people, burned them alive, put the women and on stakes run up through their organs, and marched and pranced around with them, cut their breasts off, and fried them on the, on the flames, and ate them. Cannibals. That's Catholicism for you. And Islam has done the same thing. They have taken camels and, and ripped people's bodies apart, what we call quartered. Women and children. One time, Muhammad conquered a Jewish city and they slaughtered between 800 and 1,000 men. They ripped their clothes off. They stole even the clothes they had on them. And any boy that had pubic hair was to be executed also. They'd rip them off and look. And if they had pubic hair, they were beheaded. And their wives and sisters watched on. Wonderful Christian persecution. The Fox's Book of Martyrs. John T. Christian's History of the Baptist, Volume 1 and 2. Orchard's History. The Athanasian, the Nicene and post nicene Fathers tells you about this. But you have to remember that Catholicism got in power. And when they got in power, they persecuted everybody that would not follow them, hook, line, and sinker. We are so lucky that we live in a country today where we can still preach. I don't know how much longer that's going to happen with the situation that we have. But God has preserved his word here and missionaries have gone all over the world and I am thankful for that. We still have the voice of truth here even, out in the wilds and the valley. We send these messages out to you wherever you are in the world that you can be thankful also that you can hear the word of God and these messages can still be sent out. Father, thank you for this time tonight and for your word and for all of those that have died for you down to the ages, persecuted by Islam and Catholicism both. And Father, please forgive me where I fail you. In Jesus' name.